Okay, so some of you may remember this picture if you were there. Uh, this was the second international workshop on participatory surveillance. And this was a very historic moment as, um, as you could tell, he's much younger back then. Uh, everybody sitting at this table was signing an agreement back then that all of us who had an influenza-like illness uh, system of self-reporting, which included flu tracking in Australia, influenza net with the multiple countries in Europe, and at the time, flu near you, which you know now is outbreaks near me. But we signed an agreement back then that we would commit to putting all of our data into a single system, which I'm almost embarrassed to say has finally <laughs> happened almost a decade later. Um, but it just goes to show you the challenges of when systems are developed independently and then you not only want to try to bring that data together into a single system, that's a challenge in and of itself and how that data was uh, collected and what the data standards were, but also the data sharing agreements that had to uh, come uh, to agreement between these countries about sharing the data on a common platform also took several years to negotiate. So we're really excited today for you to get the preview of what has now become Global Flu View, and I'm gonna turn it over to Onisio to tell you more about the details of the system. All right, good morning. Are you enjoying Cambodia? So before we start talking about Global Flu View, let me quick introduce you to this beautiful platform that we developed. So I'm really happy to share this with you today because Global Fluvio is not only about a web platform that displays data about influenza like UNS, participatory surveillance, but this is also about community building. And by community, I don't, I'm not referring only to general public, but I'm, refer I'm referring to you public health practitioners, epidemiologists, researchers, data scientists, policy makers, decision makers, all of these persons that are interested to modernize disease surveillance based on participatory surveillance. So, Global Flu View is a digital ecosystem for spatial and temporal visualization of influenza-like units activity across the globe. And it works based, so we don't collect data primarily, but it works uh, in a partnership with very valuable partners that we have so far. So first, we consume individual or community level real-time symptoms report for those programs that are located in several different countries. Then we consume that through an API or for the partners that don't have this implemented, we just use CSV files. And in our end, we run the data processing and we just prepare the data to be displayed in this web platform that is public already. And there you are able to see time series charts and trends and also maps, uh, just comparing this data across the partners that are part of already of Global Fluvio. And again, the most important thing is not only about the technology or the web, the web platform, it's also about community building, open knowledge sharing. So that's why we are really committed to um, 
extra, uh, exchange this knowledge among the partners that take part of this program. And right now we are covering several regions. First, we are covering North America by consuming data from outbreaks near me. We are also here in Asia, in Thailand from Sixth Sense, and also flu track in Hong Kong. We are also in Oceania uh, with a partnership with flu track in Australia. And more is coming, so we started this discussion already with flu track in Argentina to be our first country in South America, and also we are started this cooperation already with Influenza Net, so right now we have already in place data from Italy, Netherlands, Belgium, Denmark, and France, and we will get others by the end of the year. And so far, getting all those, those data from those programs, we have already 20 million data points. It's a quite good number because these allow us to understand better um, the the trends around uh, ILI passenger surveillance. And also, this is really about to help and to complement the traditional surveillance systems with this kind of approach. And 20 million data points is a lot. You cannot manage 20 million data points in your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So instead of, use Global Full View to, to do that. So let's see it live. Uh, you can go right now, for example, to globalfluvio.org and you see this beautiful landing page that is highlighting the main purposes of the system. I would like to talk about th uh, three features that we can see there. The first one is the reports feature. We have this beautiful time series chart where you can filter by symptoms or by ILI case definition that is agreed by each country or each program that takes part of it. We can also um, zoom in in some time, specific time periods, so it's easier to understand uh, what's going on in specific seasonality, for example. And we have a complete set of different filters to rule out by countries or programs, or um, even vaccinate, vaccination status, gender, uh, age range. I mean, there are a lot that you can play around with that, thanks to our partners that share this data with us, and we, then we make available this for the general public. We also have this feature that I like most, this one, because it's really interesting to see the spatial visualization of it. So in the map feature, we can see the cluster uh, perspective of the countries. So right now is the data from outbreaks near me, for example. Uh, but we have four other partners as well, like Australia, or, or Thailand. In this visualization, you can also filter by time periods as well um, and see the, the, the keys and the legends for, for every, every data point that we are uh, following. Also, we have the heat map um, feature, which is displaying only influenza-like units reports. So the reports that get this combination of symptoms we are displaying and then we can see the, the density of these reports from areas that are in our platform already. In the map, you can also do the, the time range filters and several other kind of visualization. There, there is another interesting feature, which is the resource part that we'll get there in a minute. This resource part is a strategy to converge the knowledge around passport surveillance in a single place. So we are putting together scientific papers, white papers, um, official guidelines, for example. So it makes easy the life for those ones that wants to start uh, working with passport surveillance, getting some resources to, to learn uh, from that. And finally, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are really uh, interested in to foster this community. That's why we prepared a API so every partner that is already in Global Full View can consume the API with the whole data. And this makes it easy to compare uh, country and, and countries about the trends of ILI uh, based on uh, self-report of symptoms. And I would like to, to thank to this part. So please, Autumn, could you please stand up, please? and Craig and Sandra, 
and Daniela and Carl and Kang, Matt and Pock. So let's make some noise for these guys because they are important in this system. So if you are running a ILI program that uses passport surveillance, and if you want to be there in this uh, list of partners, please let us know. It's going to be really amazing to have you there so you can expand the range of Global for View across the globe. So I'd like to thank you, and I would like to bring Mark again to the, the stage because he has an important announcement. Minutes to take some questions. So, if anybody has any questions about Global Flu View, don't be shy. Well, I, and I, please, Michael. Yeah, it's a, sort of a simple question, but could you, from a user's perspective, walk us through what happens from the beginning to the time that we get the data aggregated and get these reports and mapping features? What happens from day one, each of the way? Who's involved? Yeah, as, a, as I said before, we are not collecting data from the general public. We are just consuming the data that our program partners are doing. Um, this is, I mean, the, the main purpose of it is, I mean, could be also for general public, but it's really intended for the public health practitioners, the epidemiologists, the health departments that would like to have an additional data source to consume and to understand the trends related to ILI. Um, so, also, um, as I mentioned, we can play with different filters and different uh, features in the system just to understand better the scenario, the landscape scenario of ALI passport surveillance uh, systems. But, and if you are, for example, if you are running a health department in, I don't know, in Thailand, and you'd like to connect your system to this kind of data, you can do that, becoming a partner of it, and consuming this data through an API. So it's really to empower the community of people that use in daily, in daily basis passport surveillance systems to have this, this as an additional data layer or the resource to complement the traditional surveillance systems. So for my understanding, like uh, uh, for example, I can talk about an IC of Bangladesh. So we we uh, share data to this system of WHO uh, through the FluMar. So uh, whether you have any plan for really uh, like uh, incorporate or work with the WHO uh, Flumer system and your system. Like uh, I, I think uh, uh, we are happy to uh, uh, discuss about uh, how to share our data, but as there is a, uh, an existing system, I, I, I completely acknowledge that kind of aggregated data, mm -hmm. not really individualized, mm -hmm. but uh, can be easier to uh, discuss uh, uh, to uh, keep all on board, we are getting the data. Yeah, so that's no problem if you have only um, aggregated data level because we, have, we do have some partners that share only this kind of um, level of aggregation with us and we just managed to put this somehow there. And again, we, we did, we made Global for View in a way to make it really easy and simple to plug in other systems in, in, on it. So here we are standing as a ILI passport surveillance data stream that could be connected with traditional surveillance sources, for example. So the, the technical part about connections is quite simple for this structure right now. And we are happy to discuss the possibilities to include your data here, even if it is a, an aggregated level. I mean, our partners are collecting already data related to COVID-19. Maybe in the future, we can bring also this feature to display data related to it. Right now, for, for, to, start the big, uh, to, to start this project, we are just focusing on ILI data. But definitely in the future, you can just uh, add this functionality. I just took because the other colleague asked about FluMap. But are you going to integrate the data that are coming from the health system with this system? Is it possible for everybody? Like, I'm using the flu map, and I can use this system to integrate and to understand what's going on? Well, for Global for View, our purpose is to bring the spotlight for participatory surveillance ILI programs. Uh, but 
it's possible to integrate Global View in anything that you need. I mean, technically, we build like that way. We build something really flexible to be integrated with other sources. But in the Global View ecosystem or environment, you be, we will find only data related to passport surveillance programs. So how, how you, you, technologically speaking, how, how you integrated all, all this data into this analytical tool? Did you do a central repository or a data lake or how, how basically you did it? Because I don't think, because Mark mentioned or that there was a lot of contractual things and so on, how you overcome and how you make that happen. This one is uh, ah, more appropriate to, to start with it. In terms of what, what, what does the thing that you would like to know, uh, let, let me cap it again, the, the question. That so you have different sources. Yeah. One is in Australia, and those data are stored in Australia. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm only uh, responsible for the Thailand data. Oh, okay. So the answer is uh, aggregate that to Yeah, I can, I can get this one. Uh, we have a, a development team that, that works to integrate other partners. And we have parties that have already APIs implemented. We just need to consume them. And we have parties that has no API implemented, and then we need to consume by CSV file. So we have a diversity of data formats that we put all together here. And we have a development team which is responsible to make this happen. No, no, we don't start there. We just consume the data. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 we don't start the data. In several countries, there are uh, systems of Sentinel laboratory-based uh, collection of, uh, of uh, swaps and of identification of the circulating uh, serotypes, serogroups of influenza. Are such uh, data integrated in your system so you can have a quantitative and also a qualitative uh, uh, view of what's happening mm -hmm. in a dynamic uh, uh, way? Yeah, so for Global for View, we are only getting data for from passport surveillance programs. But this system that you just mentioned could consume data from Global for View as soon as they got a part, a formal partner of it. Yeah. So just to clarify, this was not, Global Flu View was not intended to be all the data about influenza around the world. What we were trying to do is for the first time bring self reported ILI data from multiple systems across the globe onto this platform. Now you can take this data from this platform and integrate it to what you were talking about, but at this point, our goal was to keep adding, you know, self-reported ILI data, so then this becomes the resource where hopefully all the ILI data would be. And as you know from our participatory surveillance map, those are now indicating all of the participatory surveillance systems around the globe, and we provided the data card to tell you about that system. But our dream someday is that all of that self-reported data for One Health uh, surveillance could become similar to Global Flu View. So the participatory surveillance map would not just be an indication about the program, but could also someday hopefully bring you the data from those programs, just like we brought the data together from the programs that were strictly focused on ILI. So, but with that, I want to invite Aspen and Danielle up here um, to talk about an exciting uh, effort at WHO that ties together very nicely uh, with the ILI surveillance. And while they're coming up, I want to give a big thank you to Onicio because <laughs> when, when we brought him on board last year was when the entire Global Flu View just accelerated and got finished, and he's been working night and day to get that done. So thank you so much. So we have tried to compile uh, all of this information in a draft uh, document. So for, for countries that may be interested in setting up these systems for influenza, influenza-like illness, um, we have this draft document. It's um, on the WHO website. Uh, the link, the QR is there, but feel free to contact us if you can't find it or you want more information. Um, we are opening it up for 
review from anybody and comments from everybody because we want to be able to make it as useful and um, and practical as possible so um, I think uh, through the end of the year if you have a chance to look at it and comment we would like to try to finalize it next year um, so that it's widely available for anybody to implement um, uh, so again, thanks to everybody. A lot of people in this room contributed, uh, read it, gave really valuable um, input, and thanks to Daniela for all the technical uh, support as well. Anything to add? I just wanted to add that you might find some answers to the questions that were raised yesterday. For example, who initiates uh, this kind of um, platforms? Uh, in some cases, uh, it was uh, a public health institution. In other cases, it was university. In other cases, it were, it were private uh, uh, partners. Uh, there is a diversity of experiences that we tried to summarize. Um, also from uh, the point of view of uh, analyzing the data, uh, for example, what kind of data you will get, and this is will this will be the, really the core of the workshop that we will have today, but you will find some uh, issues reported also in this document. Um, what trends you want to capture, which diseases, how you define a denominator, which biases you will have to deal with, funders, stakeholders, so which really try to put everything. Uh, so uh, if you spot anything that's missing and that we should have covered, please let us know because uh, we think it's a living document that will become a more complete with your help. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. So thank you very much. We have set up two stations in the back, you can see, with laptops uh, for those on breaks. If you want to play around with Global Flu View, uh, feel free and we'll keep those available for the rest of the uh, uh, the IWAPs for um, anyone who wants to 